in the last khanda all aspects of aparavidya has been thought of samsara merge with dakshara purusha which is the essence and root of samsara akshara purusha is satya this is the subject of paravidya so in this ghanda this is mundaga second part ghanda 1 in this the subject of paravidya is discussed tadetat satyam yatha sudipta pavaga pavagat vispulinga sahasrasha prabhavande sarupa tathakshara dvidha somya bhava prajayande tatra chaivabi yanti saumya from the well kindled fire thousands of similar sparks come out similarly from that akshara manifold objects manifold universes are born and merge in its back and that alone is truth nothing else is truth the truth which is subject of abharavidya and has the lakshana of effects of actions or karma is only a relative truth paramartha satya the absolute truth is the subject of paravidya the subject of avidya is anurda untruth only ruta is having truth as subject how is the absolute truth which is unmanifested and very subtle made directly perceived or manifested in the devotees or in the seeker's mind whatever comes out of the flame as sparks is fire itself similarly whatever objects that come out of the ultimate cause the brahman is brahmamaya only as akasha is observed in objects with differences in the whole as as in the case of a pot a pot space the einstein said about the box space no but the rishi thinks about the pot space uh, just the same but agasha in, within the box and within the pot that is the same that space brahman entering different bodies take manifold forms and names but essentially it is brahman only whatever name you call it whatever form it takes it is brahman only energy is brahman only when one when it is unmanifested and when it become manifested the eka or the one becomes or appears to be as different names and forms but it is the same one these names and forms are not the truth they are the they are not absolute truth they are relative truths the cause for these the basis for all these as the unmanifested shakti or power alone is truth that is what is said then the next sutra says the divine purusha is amruta and amurta it doesn't have a form it doesn't have a death either it is eternal without an exterior or interior without birth without breath without mind and it is the purest and even beyond the akshara it passes beyond the aksharas divya or divine is because it has dyodanavan self revealing light it is a self revealing light that is why it is called a deva or a light or a divya so the word deva doesn't mean god there are 33 crores of devas in english they translate it as 33000 gods it doesn't mean like that deva is a jyotanavan divya self revealing lights energy expresses itself in not only 33 crores but in so many numbers there are so many different methods of self revelation of that light but it is that it is swayam jyoti it is the light by itself it shines transcendently within our own atman as well as in the dio dio means that which is lighted up it doesn't cannot be translated into the sky sky is in english each and every letter doesn't have a meaning d 
Dio means it is not Dio is not sky. It is the the area where you you see the light, the enlightened space where the energy waves are filled with. And this Swayam Jyoti is light by itself is devoid of any form, and it is actually unmanifested, subtle but self-revealing, self-manifesting energy within us as well as without us. Without a form, it has no limiting boundaries. But within us, it has a limiting boundary of our body, and there is no cause before it to give birth to it, because. Because of this character it is called a Swayambhu and Aja. Swayambhu means that which is born by its soul without a previous one. And Aja means birthless. So both are different, same. Not, they are not different terms. Only born things are subject to changes like birth and death, old age, degeneration etc. But none of these effects are there in the absolute truth. It is this Ajara, no old age, Amrita, eternal, Akshara, not destroyed, and Apaya, fearless, and Dhruva, fixed or permanent always. We feel that the Dio is having a blue color, the sky is having a blue color. We say that. But it changes in colors during evening, during morning, etc. we say. But is that true? No. The sky has no color at all. The sky, I, I, because I am speaking in English, I don't have any other word. I am speaking the English word, the Dio. Dio has no color. It has, it is just colorless space-time, energy and no planes either and it is limitless. It is not limited by anything. Similarly, for truth that appear manifold, we feel that there is prana, life or mind, etc. If mind is there, there should be organs. If organs are there, there is a form and a prana. Prana or vayu being a moving force, there should be change in position. Thus, satya or truth will be opposite of whatever is said here. Though none of these things are there for the real truth, it appears as if it is meditating, as if it is moving. Jaya Deva, Lelaya Deva, says Brihadaranyaga Upanishads. It, it seems that it is uh, meditating, it is moving, etc. Since there are no Upadhi for it, it is white, pure white, is Swatik, mind, prana, etc. Upadhi. Truth doesn't have such Upadhi. So it is pure Swatik light only. The unmanifested Akshara has forms of names and forms and seeds, dhatu from which the name and the form designated by it are formed, and also the seed state of the cause and effect, and by these one can point out it within one's mindscape, not outside. But this nirubhadhiga shuddha shubhra padha, nirubhadhiga shuddha shubhra padha is beyond that Akshara Varna, even since it does not have any such Upadhi. Garga Samhida gives a higher position to the pure white Ratha above the unmanifested Krishna or the dark Tamas. Then he points out that both are the same. One is unmanifested Krishna, the, the other is manifested pure white Ratha, but both are the same. Bhagavad Gita explains this pure state as Aditya Varna and beyond Tamas, Tamasat Para. The Akasha as a word is understood by human mind as a subject of day-to-day -day experience as crisscross or the Proda. And then how can we say that it is a Prana without breath or winds? From Purusha were formed Prana and mind. Both are Putra or children for the Purusha. Father has to be before the child and not vice versa. Therefore, the prana had its father in a prana purusha, says Shankara. Akasha, kham. Kham is the word for Akasha, not, uh, it is a different word. Uh, it was first formed and in it the first vibration was created and the, that vibration 
formed the moment and from it the winds and the breath and the life originated the moment of winds and the forms of multitudes of celestial objects could not be formed before akasha or gham or the field of their existence as a cause so the field formed and in the field the moments happened then only the manifested things came up the avarna arupa chaitanyamaya bhamadravya is unmanifested akasha or energy fields gham is an energy field it became liquefied and solidified when liquefied it flowed and in the ghara or the akasha which is a dark unmanifested energy field or which is even compared to a cave like space time a shining self revealing light was manifested this self manifested light within the dark unmanifested energy of krishna it solidified formed the numerous galaxies and nebula the stars solar systems and from the solar system from the energy of the sun which is a part of the cosmic energy the absolute truth earth was formed and only after that the beings on earth were formed and among them the man so all these structures all these brahmandas are the children the putra of the same very same brahman that is said in the second sutra then in the third one from that parama purusha prana manas all the indriya and the akasha vayu lights apas this earth which bears all were born from the purusha with no upadhi the numerous forms with upadhi with emotions avidya vidya and everything were formed the relative truths and the untruths were also formed from that absolute truth only the kham which we feel the kham is the akasha the field of energy which we feel the winds which move between the swarloka and the bhuloka in the middle of these two with differences of in and out and carrying carrying it is called avaha avaha means carrying in sanskrit it has got the carrying capacity the uh, vayu the winds has got the avaha capacity the fire as stars and other shining lights water as apas the earth these are the panchabhuta having properties of shabda sparsha rupa rasagandha in order shabda is sound inherent in the field of gham or akasha sparsha or touch then rupa the form the rasa the taste and gandha the smell these are the inherent properties of the five bhutas they form the organs of the various things on earth and they are on not only on earth in the universe and they are subjects and are the derivatives of the one without organs or properties the panja buddha were made from that one manifested one without any of these properties so prakriti with panja buddha have saguna properties are there but before that dhamman which is nirguna doesn't have the properties doesn't have the panja buddhas or either these special properties and the avidya aparavidya etc were born from the akshara which is the subject of paravidya so we are dealing with that paravidya which, which is the first born the first born from the hiranya garbha is the wind vayu as the virat the virat purusha that virat even he is within the egg within the hiranya garbha by definition hence it is not the brahman which has no in or out by definition prathama jada pranad viranya garbha jayade andasya arthat virat virat is thus born from akshara purusha with no in or out now the form of that virat is explained agni murtha agni is in the head chakshushi chandra suryo surya and chandra are in the eyes disha shrotre directions are in ears vag 
Vivrutaschaveda. The words of that Purusha are the revealed. Vivruta means revealed. The revealed Vedas. Vayu Prano. Vayu is Prana of that Virat Purusha. Hridaya. The Hridaya of that Purusha is Vishyam. Vishyamasya. Vishyam is the, the entire Brahmanda is his Hridaya. Then what is his Pada? His feet. Prithviyam. Prithvi is the feet. This earth is the feet of that Virat Purusha. This Virat Purusha is the Antaratman of all Bhudas. Sarva Bhuda Antaratma says the fourth Sutta. So the head of the human being and the head of the entire universe or the multiverse as the worlds of light is the Murtha. You know, on the, it is on our head that the, on our murtha, that our brain, the, the source of all lights, all causes sits there, no? Just like that, if you take the multiverses at the top of the Virat Purusha is the head or the murtha, where the Agni, the energy, and only energy exists there. As a symbol of this, the Atharva Vedins wear fire in their head. The two eyes of the Virat Purusha, are the sun and the moon. F for a person who looks from the earth, the two lights of the day and the night are considered as the two eyes of the Virat Purusha, the sun and the moon, to see the day and the night. They are opened when one knows the Surya Siddhanta and the Chandra Siddhanta. These are the two ways of observation of the celestial things in relation to earth which started with the Indians. Both are followed in India. It's not Surya Siddhanta alone. Surya Siddhanta alone means you need to know only about the sun, the moon and the earth and their movements. Then you know Surya Siddhanta. But only when you start knowing about Chandra Siddhanta, you, you know about the, uh, the nebulae, how the moon's clock moves along these different 27 groups are named and when it reaches there etc. Those things and the entire stellar map is known only with Chandra Siddhanta. That is only when you travel in the night especially in a sea. When you are traveling by night in the sea you cannot depend upon the shadow, the chaya, the sun etc. You have to depend upon the stellar map and the movements of the uh, pole star and the uh, moon. This is these three groups. This that means the Surya Vamshi, Chandra Vamshi, and the Agni Vamshi. The those who study about the energy, those who study about the Surya, those who study about the moon. These are the three, only three races of India from time immemorial. That is the Agni Vamsha, Surya Vamsha, Chandra Vamsha. These are the three races of India. Nobody called anybody as Hindu, Muslim or Christian. Agni, Surya and Chandra Vamsha of Indians. These are the Indians from time immemorial. It is because of their knowledge that they, ca they classified the people like that. All the people of India belong to these three races alone. The eight directions are the ears. The hearing or listening and shruti from all corners of universe reach them. The vibrations of winds in all directions bring all shruti. Veda revealed as vak or word in the form of mantra shine on the tongue. In the heart, the entire universe, the multiverses are revealed as thoughts within your mind. In Sushupti, the world merge in mind and manifest again on awakening. In Jagrat, as if a spark out of fire, it is again reborn. The earth is the feet of this Virat Purusha. Therefore, all the living and non-living beings on earth born from the feet of the Virat are all of us are Shudra everything that is born on earth are primarily called a Shudra those who, we are all born on the earth only not in sun or moon 
though we use the energy of that we are born on earth so all of us are shudra the feet though considered as the lowest part of virat purusha underneath part but it is the most sacred part because it is on the feet of the virat purusha that we give puja worship for those men born on earth for those living beings born on earth the feet is the sacred position where they find all happiness whatever is born at the feet of this virat purusha vishnu is sacred ganga only ganga is born at, on the feet of the vishnu and it falls on the head of the shiva when all the humans are born out of the feet of vishnu or shudra they understand this unique nature as children of vishnu harijan we are all harijan we are all children of hari and we are all children of this mother nature and the karma and its effects makes the most sattvic and purest of the pure and well versed in brahma vidya they become brahmana this virat purusha as vishnu is spoken of by shankara acharya in the following words eva devo vishnu rananda prathama shariri trilokya deho padhi sarvesham bhudanam antaratma the witness the listener the analyzer the knower the cause of all is vishnu and from vishnu by the panchagni the panchabhuda or the panchagni all things which are subjected to change are born from him only panchagni or the akasha the clouds earth women and purusha according to chandokya upanishad it is not the panchabhuda alone it is the time space the clouds from which rain comes the earth from which all the living and non living things come up and among the living things the two races of men and women from whom the next generation start according to chandogya upanishad these are the five agni and these five agnis come out of the vishnu vishnu's feet the phenomenon of the zodiac the nakshatra graha etc the rains the rivers the oceans the earth with its moving and fixed objects all beings in the class of women and men are born they live and they merge in this feet of vishnu only this is the vishwarupa which is explained in the gita also only when you start thinking and when your uh, brain the faculties of the brain become the top most you reach the agni race the agni is the brahmin race all the others are actually only shudra only professionally they can they can take up any profession but they are all harijan all of us are like that only one in a crore become a sarvatna a brahma purusha so brahmana is not a caste or a race it is just a knowledgeable person a sarvatna that is the real meaning of brahmana